This tutorial shows how to handle optional record fields using the undefined is not a problem library. Let's talk about why first. An ergonomic way of working with optional record fields is especially useful when interacting with JavaScript, aka FFI. Imagine we want to integrate React Player into our app. The doc shows that we can create a basic React Player component by passing a URL, and that's it. But then, if we scroll down to the props or properties section, we see many other properties, which also have default values. In the Wild West JavaScript, we don't have to worry about any of this. We pass values we care about and ignore the rest. For example, if we need to, we can pass a light and set it to true to override the default value and ignore the rest. But what about pure script world? where we must be strict about types. First, we can also ignore all the fields. If we create a type for our props and we only care about required fields like URL, we say URL is a string and everything else doesn't matter. And this is a fine type. We can use it to interact with the library and create player components within any URL while everything else stays at default. For example, we can create props somewhere and pass the URL to the video. Okay, and what if we want to have an option to set the light property? First, note that there is no null, undefined, or anything like that in the PureScript standard library. So we have to do something else. If you have a function programming background, you might reach for option type or maybe type. But this doesn't come for free. First, it has a runtime cost. It's not a JavaScript primitive, but also a developer cost. You cannot omit these properties. As you can see, we get a compilation error right away. You have to pass nothing explicitly, which is annoying, especially for large records. And otherwise, if you want to pass a value, we have to wrap it in a just and pass it around. Luckily, there is undefined is not a problem library, which unlocks a neat way to handle option record fields using untagged union, undefined or a value, and type safe zero cost versions, which says that the value is either undefined or has a type A. A quick intro to the setup only if you care about the context or if you want to follow along. Otherwise, you can skip a few seconds and just get to the meat of the library. First of all, I added some stuff to my dependencies. I have some random project with a bunch of stuff. The important part is undefined is not a problem and React Basic Hooks and React Basic DOM to tie the stuff together. And everything else is either brought by them or by some other stuff. It doesn't matter. If you want to see what's needed, you can see it in the accompanying article. On the JavaScript side, we have to have React and React player, and my main is the simple stuff that renders the example imported from the problems, which we're gonna play around with. And the example is the stuff we've seen so far, plus the example, the JSX. So for now, it's just a div with nothing inside. And then we're gonna put the React player or multiple players inside and see how it's gonna be rendered. So it turns out the library provides the opt exactly for our use case. We can use it instead of maybe to get an optional field value. This value is just a value. And there are two ways to create it. One option to pass an undefined. And the second option would be to pass whatever value wrapped in opt. The undefined is just JavaScript undefined, and the op calls PureScript curse function. This means we don't pay for any of this. There is no wrapping or unwrapping, primitive, plain JavaScript underneath. However, we still explicitly pass undefined or call opt by hands, which could be better. Let's deal with this next. Here's the companion JavaScript file for the PureScript file I'm working on. It has the export of the import of the React player as a player implementation. This is a typical boilerplate I have when I do FFIs. I import the foreign component using the props type and call it something suffix with the imp. And the prop size we just saw before, it's whatever required fields are plus the optional fields with opts. And then I create a function to construct the component. It takes props, which is a P, ignore this part for now and returns a JSX, which is rendered React virtual DOM. We're gonna look at it later, just let's see how it works now. We don't care about these props for now, we can create stuff right away. So we have a player one, which is a JSX. It's a React player with a URL and the light theme set to true. The first cool thing, we don't need to wrap stuff in opt anymore. And if we want to create a second player with a default mode, we just drop it as if we are in JavaScript. No boilerplate, we can ignore optional fields and use straightforward types when we want to set them. But note that required fields are still required. It's not going to compile if the required field is missing. We can see if it works by rendering these two players. So we have one is light one, which is just an image. And the second one is the default one, although it's a whole preview, as expected. Cool, so how does it work? Here's the component constructor once again. Curse fills the missing fields in a given record and transform values to opt if needed. This happens on the type level. And we have the curse constraint to check or prove if it's safe to curse. And note the imports that we are using. The library provides two cursing strategies, closed and open. They share the interface but differ in instance chains, which results in slightly different behavior. It doesn't matter for now, 
check out the docs when or if you're curious. But other than that, that's the core of it. There are cases when we want even more type safety. For example, I'm not a fan of Boolean, so I might create a proper type to use in pure scripts. For example, a mode, which is a light or a full default mode. And then I'll make a function to convert it back to Booleans and adopt the props type, which is good for me. But the JavaScript library still expects a Boolean. We must FFI the all props with an option boolean, not mode. So we need to somehow glue the two together. We can adapt the constructor function. So we coerce all the props as we did before, and then map the light value to its boolean representation using pseudomap. The library provides a pseudomap function. We use record module to modify a property for a label specified using a value level proxy for a type level string. And now we can use proper types on pure script, which are gonna be converted to the underlying JavaScript types. And this is it, a little of preparation work, a sparkle of boilerplate, and we get a nice way of working with optional values. Outside of the component module, we use straightforward types and don't worry about unnecessary optional fields. And join me next time when we talk about problem that is not defined.